Welcome to this presentation on the art of Minoan pottery. First off, let me introduce you to the Minoan people. The Minoan civilization thrived on the island of Crete during the Bronze Age from approximately 3000 BCE until 1100 BCE. The Minoan people created a remarkable civilization. They were known in the ancient world for their great cities and palaces, but most of all, the Minoan people were known for their art. Now, in order to better understand the elements of design, which the Minoan artists were so known for, I decided to recreate a design similar to one on a Kamar ware jar, and we will look at that jar in a bit. Minoan art is known for its bright colors and energetic lines. For this piece, I chose to use a marine style decorative element. The artists who painted the pottery would commonly decorate them with marine life, similar to the fish that I am painting in this piece. There was a beautiful sense of stylization in Minoan art. It was common for plants and flowers to be abstracted into more geometric forms. Often curving lines would run along the top edges and bottom edges of the pottery. These would represent waves and water movement. I tried to emulate this in the wave pattern at the top and bottom of this painting. Much of what we know about the Minoan civilization was discovered by Sir Arthur Evans. Evans was a British archaeologist who studied Bronze Age Aegean civilizations. The name Minoan was first used by Sir Arthur Evans. He drew inspiration from the legendary King Minos, whose labyrinth-like palace was compared to the palace at Knossos, which Evans unearthed in 1903. Sir Arthur Evans' archaeological discoveries caused quite a stir in the art world of the early 1900s. It's interesting to note that much of the commercial art produced in the 1920s and 1930s during the Art Deco and Art Nouveau periods has used much of the same design language found in the Minoan and Mycenaean art. Although art historians differ on the theories behind how this influence became so popular, there's certainly evidence that these discoveries impacted the art world of the time. This is a great example of how the language of art can communicate across culture and even across time. And after washing the ink off, here's the final product. Now let's take a look at the designs that inspired this. Inspiration for color and style was drawn from both of these vases, but specifically from the one on the left, as you can tell by the fish design. Both of these jars are what is known as Kamarware jars. Kamarware dates back to around 2000 BCE, to the era of the New Palace period in Minoan history. Kamarware is very significant for the Minoan civilization. Through the Kamarware, the Minoans were able to establish strong trade routes with the surrounding Mediterranean countries. Kamarware pottery has been found in Egypt, Greece, Italy, and other areas around the Mediterranean. Kamarware was made using pottery wheels rather than building by hand. This is evident by their smooth sides and their tapered shape. They become smaller near the base. Notice the light and dark designs on these jars. This is a characteristic of Kamarware. The background was often a dark blue or a black and was set against the design, which was a lighter color. In these cases, there is white and lighter shades of red and yellow. The designs on these jars was painted on using slip. Slip is a paint made by mixing clay, water, and pigments. While the designs on these jars are very abstract, we can see that they have clear ocean and water inspiration. Let's first take a look at the jar on the left. The central design is a fish, and below it there appears to be perhaps a netting or perhaps another fish. It's rather unclear. Below the fish there are repeated spiral shapes, and they almost look like little snails crawling along the ocean floor. Maybe they are snails, or maybe they are swirling waves. 
The water motif is evident either way. At the top and bottom of this jar, there is a series of curving lines, and these resemble waves, or they could possibly be wind as well. These lines create flowing movement, and it circles all the way around the jar. The lines at the top and bottom also serve to frame the design. Now let's take a look at the jar to the right. By the design of this jar, we can tell that it was clearly made to pour liquid from. Perhaps it was used to hold wine or oil or maybe even water. Like the first jar, this jar has the spiral designs, only on this one they are formed into a sort of S-curve. The design is not as naturalistic as the first jar, and this one has a more abstracted and graphic design to it. The designs on the jar definitely have a very energetic feel to them. The oval shapes on either side of the S have upward sweeping lines below them. The whole design wraps around the form of the vase. This vase has red lines to separate the top of the jar from the central design. And there is a white line which separates and grounds the design at the base. Notice at the top of the vase, there appears to be the head of a bird. The bird's head appears to be looking upward toward the sky. There also seems to be an eye on either side of the pitcher. Pottery like both of these would have been created in small workshops. The artists may have worked seasonally, but the volume of ceramics that were exported leads most historians to believe that these workers made pottery their full-time occupation. To conclude, through learning about art and this civilization specifically, we can learn more about these people, the Minoans, and the culture that they had to produce this type of art. I hope you enjoyed listening. Thank you.